as you start in the new volunteer role with the Division of Extension, it's important that you act within the scope of your volunteer position description. The university can be liable for acts of negligence or unsafe actions, so it's important that you use your best efforts to follow the university and program policies and show that you are thinking about keeping people safe. If you fail to use reasonable precautions, it may be seen as negligence. Liability protection is provided to volunteers when acting on behalf of the University of Wisconsin in the scope of the duties that are outlined in your position description. So what does being covered by state liability insurance mean? The state can pay claims for injury or property damage to others based on the negligent acts of employees or volunteers. The state can also defend employees or volunteers against allegations of negligence, but only if the employee or volunteer was acting within the scope of their responsibilities to the university. This liability coverage does not include medical costs if you are injured. It is also important to mention that wherever you go, your own personal health, auto, and homeowner's insurance follows you. Although there may be liability insurance to cover in case of an accident, your own insurance may be activated. Driving on behalf of the university is not within any standard extension volunteer position description. Transportation to and from activities, for example, is the responsibility of the participant and or their parents and guardians. There is no expectation for you as a volunteer to drive or bring people anywhere as part of your volunteer role. Youth and adults getting to a program, event, or space is not an expectation that we at the UW-Madison Division of Extension have for volunteers. There are limited situations where a volunteer may need to drive within the scope of their volunteer role. When this occurs, volunteers need to go through an application and approval process through the University of Wisconsin-Madison. This process may take several weeks. Part of creating a safe environment is thinking about things before they happen. We call this the risk management process. As volunteers, we want to work with you to consider what steps you can take to create a safe learning environment for the youth and adults you are working with, as well as safety for yourself. It is your responsibility as a volunteer before a workshop is held or an event is hosted, to consider what might happen during this event or experience. When we spend time focusing on safety and prevention, we limit our liability exposure. Let's break it down into three steps. Step one, think through potential risks. Step two, have a plan of what you would do if something happened and act on that plan if necessary. Step three, be aware of what is happening around you and adjust. We cannot necessarily remove all risk, but we can develop a risk response. Think about it this way. What can we do to reduce, transfer, or avoid the risk? To reduce the risk, identify potential risks of the planned activity and brainstorm ideas with your extension supervisor and other volunteers on how to reduce those risks. Examples of reducing risk include not serving snacks or meals with common allergies, or removing tripping hazards such as hoses and garden tools. To transfer risk, think about other entities that can provide services or insurance options that can be purchased. Talk to your extension supervisor. There might be options you don't know that are available. Examples of transferring the risk include chartering a bus instead of using personal vehicles to transport participants, or hold meetings or activities in a public space instead of your home. You can choose to avoid a risk by changing the experience, removing what is causing the hazard, or deciding to discontinue the activity. Some examples of avoiding risk include replacing a night hike with a daytime hike, or increasing the ratio of adult volunteers so an experience can be held with youth participants. As a reminder, it is important that volunteers acknowledge actions of participants, 
volunteers, or staff that could lead to potential liability claims and report injury and property damage incidents promptly to their program or extension office. This is important because it will help the university appropriately respond to any issue that may come up, especially if an insurance claim or lawsuit is filed. If an injury does occur, complete the following steps. Call 911 if life-threatening. It is better to be cautious and call and find out that the situation is not as bad as you thought than not call when emergency response is needed. Administer care, if certified or until EMS arrives. Wisconsin's Good Samaritan Statute for Emergency Medical Care protects members of the public who administer care. It states, any person who renders emergency care at the scene of any emergency or accident in good faith shall be immune from civil liability for his or her acts or omissions in rendering such emergency care. Call emergency contact. You need to let the emergency contact know as soon as it is safe to do so. It is encouraged that volunteers have emergency contact information available at all times. Ask the program leader or extension staff member if you find yourself in need of this information. Contact extension staff. We know that accidents happen. When they do, you need to let extension staff know as soon as possible, and they will help you with reporting. And finally, complete an incident report form. All injuries need to have an incident report form completed. Even if a claim is not made, the incident needs to be reported to the university within 48 hours of the incident. Volunteers hold an important role within the Division of Extension and directly impact the experiences and resources provided to families and communities across Wisconsin. Our staff are thankful for your support and the ways in which you teach, learn, lead, and serve, transforming lives and communities. As you continue on to complete the required steps to be an Extension volunteer, please reach out to your program or county-based staff for support and questions. You never have to navigate volunteer requirements and processes by yourself. Our staff are always happy to support you in your volunteer role.